Yesterday, it was announced that uh, the Dante DiVincenzo signing was official, official tissue. Nick's PR came out with their statement. He fits the culture. He's going to bring a lot of intangibles to the team, which we understand. And the official contract structure it was released, according to our guy Fred Katz. Uh, it's it's ten point nine million in the first year of the season. Then it goes to eleven point four, twelve million, and then twelve and a half. And then he's got seven hundred and fifty k in on in bonuses if he's able to make things like defensive player of the year, MVP, MIP, so on and so forth. Now, quick reactions on the DiVincenzo signing. Look, I like the signing. I've said on a number of shows now, when you look at the money that the Knicks had to deal with, had to spend, and you look at the available candidates who were in their wheelhouse, this was obvious. He's going to fit here. He's going to play well here. He brings a lot of intangibles, as I said, playmaker, three-point shooter, can rebound, very good offensive rebound. Uh, so you have him and Hart being dogs on the boards, which is going to be great. A winning mentality, you know, something that uh, is one of those intangibles that you need to, to continue to grow your locker room. And a guy that can make plays, right? You, you can never have enough guys that can make smart plays and, and have high basketball IQ. So I think that alone is going to help this team and, and elevate this team. The issue is for me, fellas, is you now have a continued logjam at the guard spot. Last year when Hart came, Hart was great, but the crunch time situation, who's going to close? Is it Hart? Is it RJ? Is it Grimes? Is it IQ? Sometimes those things came to a head. You bring Tim Vincenzo in here, it's going to be the same thing. Same thing. It's going to be the same thing. So I like his addition to this team. I think he will help, but it just makes me wonder what's next and what's coming down the pipeline, man. What do you think about the, uh, the Dante pickup? I like, the t I like the pickup, man. I mean, we talked about our potential free agent, man. We did the whole ranking. He was my number one pick free agent. I mean, even though he was the number one free agent on my list, you know, it's also based on what the Knicks needs were, who was potentially out there available for this free agency class. I like what he's going to bring to this team. You, you said all of those things, right? Hustle, grit, density, good three-point shooting. Uh, could be a playmaker. You know, I keep bringing it back. Is it is he going to do the same things exactly they did out in the Warriors? Probably not because that's a good motion offense with Steve Kerr. We don't really run that type of system out here in New York. So it's going to look a little different, I feel like, for the beginning. But I still think what we'll get is a good Dante DiVincenzo, like what we saw in the Milwaukee Bucks. But it comes back to the glut of guards, man. But for me, it's, okay, what's the next move? Because I think when we talked last season about, oh, we can't trade quick, oh, we can't trade any of these guys, it's because mm – -hmm. Hey, if we do that, then we're really gutting the depth of this team. Now we have this depth at guard where it's like, okay, if we move somebody, it could be good to bring somebody else in. The question is, who's that person you're bringing in? Obviously, it's like, what trade? Like, what's the trade aspects of it? Like, picks, all those things. We can go into the nuances. Who's that guy that's coming in? Would it be like a Paul George? Are you talking about getting someone like uh, Joel Embiid? All right, because James Harden's still out there. We don't know what's going to happen to him. Um, you could even throw Paul George in there just because the Clippers and and, uh, and Harden and those those rumors flying around and maybe you have to move off of PG and the the deal's too good where you just can't hold on to him. But I think for what the Knicks have right now, it's good, it's solid. Um, I just wonder how we're going to do it. Are we going to get yeah. more? You know, CK, we were talking, we were joking about mm -hmm. watching Isaiah uh, Roby yesterday, Roby. right? Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing uh, him playing the power forward. And yeah. granted, he's coming back from injury. He hasn't played since February, March. He's, he's not going to make it. It's, it's not going to happen. But he's still, I think the thing that, you know, I jokingly retweeted from you is that I think we got RJ Hart, uh, Sims. That, that's like the lock at the four position right now yeah. for the back of four. And I think that's how you're going to get these guys extra minutes. Yeah, because you have to look at it this way, man. You know Tibbs is already going to keep it to a consent nine-man rotation. Uh, we, we drop Obi Toppin and you try to figure out who it is that's going to take that spot. And you can say, you know, Roby, you can try and get cute and say the Jericho Sims and stuff like that, but you got to realistically look at the talent that you have. And you know IQ got to get those minutes. Now Defense Chesel got to get those minutes. Hart, uh, you know, Grimes, IQ, whoever it is that ends up on the bench. And it's a lot of guard play, but talent-wise, they got to play. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it, he's going to have to get cute with who plays that four position. Might not be a traditional four. I'm sorry. I know everybody wants... You know, they're thinking Isaiah Roby just because of the size, but it might not be that way. Um, but that leads to my question then. Like, is this the end of our free agency? Like, what else could we possibly be doing that's not trade involved? Because there's a lot of question marks there with that team. I mean, I like the talent, but as far as, you know, fit and matchups defensively with a lot of other teams, not very confident when it comes yeah. to that second unit, you know? 
Well, I, I think right now what you're going to see is probably some small ball Josh Hart at the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Roby's not making it. And no, that's, that, that's no disrespect to him. He's, he's not going to make it. Tibbs no. is not going to go there no. uh, to, at the backup four. It's, it's a critical position. And it, they're just going to have to go without for a little while. I just feel like the DiVincenzo pickup, it's – for insurance purposes, right. it's going to help the team, but it's also for insurance purposes because I think they are gearing up for the next big move. Okay. And that could come at the expense of IQ. Right. It could be RJ. It could be Grimes. It could be a combination of those guys. So getting DiVincenzo is important so that if you are going to remove some of your depth to bring in a, a more complimentary piece, at least you'll have something left. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to end up making a trade that some fans are just not going to like because we like our homegrown talent and we want to see them succeed here. But it's going to come because last uh, trade deadline, there was the interest in Ananobi. This free agency offseason, the interest in Paul George, the Clippers and the Knicks did talk on PG. And so we know they know that the need at the wing is there. They need a strong two-way wing yeah. to take on some of the premier wings in this league and also be a scoring threat to help uh, Jalen and help maybe Julius if he's here or, or even RJ if he's here. They need a strong wing. You, yes, Steven Chenzo can play D. Hart can play D. They compete. They fight. They're gritty. And sometimes they'll use that and their IQ to be assets and above average defenders. But it's, it's something like when you watch this team sometimes and you see bigger wings shooting right over them. You see that need. It, yeah. It's a clear need that, 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 uh, that the team has to address. And so I don't think they're going to jump in on PG, right? I think they did kick the tires on it to see if the price is low enough. As they should have. To get, right, yeah. as they should have. Yeah. You got to do your due diligence. Yeah. But I'm watching this OG Ananobi thing, man. Mm. I just, I'm watching this OG Ananobi thing. I'm not a fan. With Van Fleet going to the Rockets, yeah. it's kind of hard to see where the Raptors are headed right now. Are they going to trade Siakam? He wants a big bag. Uh, they did bring in Schroeder and all these other guys. Trent Jr.'s back. Well, you can't read Ujiri right now, man. And so it's known that OG Ananobi wants a bigger role. He wants a bigger offensive role. He is the ideal wing defensively that the Knicks need. And he just signed with CAA. I'm putting my tinfoil hat on, fellas. No, I feel you. I'm putting it on. I, my thing is, do we, just, do we concede to their asking price? That's my beef with the whole thing. I feel like we're going to be giving a lot to be getting a, a little. I mean, I, I understand the upside and all that stuff, but... Man, it, we, we were hearing all the rumors about them wanting four picks, five picks, this person and that person. And it's just like you're, you're asking for Jason Tatum type uh, packages for an OG Ananobi. And I think that's my worry. Has nothing to do with him as a player. I, I, I would love him on this team. I just worry about that asking price. And that's, that's the thing I'm looking at the most when it comes to him. But guys, like, look, I think. Yeah, speak, speak to you, Michael. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for, for OG, though, right? And we were talking about Messiah. And this is why I pushed back. Like last week, what saying is he kind of overrated because at this point, you let Fred Van Vliet walk. We could talk about the whole Kawhi thing, whether you try to get assets back in for him. You know, you trade DeRozan for him. I get it. Uh, the ifs, ands, and like they won that year. They did it. It looks great on him. It all played out. So he looks like a great GM doing that moment. But at this point, when you watch how he's this high asking price for all these players, man, yeah. at some point, no team is doing business with him. And so I think. If, you're, if the Knicks are legit thinking about OG and Anobi and anyone that's interested in getting out there, like, look, even I think, I'm not sure, but like there were some talks about Memphis potentially going after OG and Anobi last, last year, year yeah. right? And it's like, that didn't happen. Although OG would be good on that team, it didn't happen yeah. because I think Memphis is like, yo, you're asking way too much for this guy who's just a role player on your team. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think the reality is for that is that it will drop down. I think there is going to be some, there's going to be a little level market play at this point we just seen what happened for players like yeah i agree this this offseason so i think yeah. that can turn out if the knicks are want, want to be serious about that but that's just in my opinion another marginal move that's not really the one the I knicks agree. like if you're the knicks and you're thinking about og ananobi i like og ananobi as a player i think he's solid versatile you can guard one through four easily some nights you can guard the five especially your backup five he shoots well from three um He's got a little, uh, he's got a little herky jerky uh, motions to his game, right? For me, though, if you really, if you, if you're this Knicks front office and you really, 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 really want to go take that next step, I'm looking at someone like Joel Embiid, right? That's that's what I'm waiting for because Philly at this point, 
Like, if you're just gauging what the NBA is doing, what has Philly done for Joel Embiid these last couple of years? Yeah. Ben Simmons, that was supposed to be his running mate. It was supposed to be him, Tobias Harris, and that didn't pan out. You know, they even had Mark L. Fultz. That didn't work out well, although he's on, on, on a right track back in Orlando. It still didn't work out in Philly. Now you're talking about, okay, we brought in Doc. We're going to do we're going to have Doc and Embiid and then didn't work out with Simmons. Then you trade Simmons for James Harden. The whole Harden experiment didn't work. Now he wants to get traded. I think he's going to be starting the, off in Philadelphia. As we saw with Brooke last, last year, yeah, how KD, KD, yeah, with KD and Kyrie like they requested a trade. I still think they're going to start. I think Harden's going to start this season. I still think he ends up being traded. Yeah. But at that point, if you're Joel Embiid, you're turning 30 soon. Don't you want to go compete? What has Philly done for you? So yeah. if and you talk about the CAA connection, you know, you talk about it with OG and Obi. I'm looking at Embiid, be like, something's going to happen there at some point. At what point will Embiid want to get past the second round? The closest he's ever been was when the Raptors and uh, and, and mm. 76ers played, right? And we're talking about the a Kawhi, Kawhi shot. shot. We're talking yeah. about a Kawhi shot yeah. with seconds left, and yeah. so that's the closest he's ever been. Talk about uh, wanting to play with Jimmy. Well, if you want to play with someone that's close to being gritty, something like that, smart. Joan Brunson would probably be his Lord best. Lord General, Brunson number be his 11. Best guy he's ever Absolutely. played with. Facts. Right? Absolutely, man. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's get these likes up for this Blue Eye Studios, oh, man. Boy. The background is looking crispy. We got CPCK and Alex on the one, twos, and threes, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Uh, salute to Russell Whiskey, a uh, franchise channel member, loyal franchise channel member now of five months. Uh, he says, we need Macal Bridges. Mm. Well, look, man, we, we needed him on draft night, but that ship has sailed, and now, now he's across the water. Now he's across the swamp over there in New Jersey, and so I don't think uh, that we swamp have a chance dragons. there. Yeah. It's not happening. The, the, the full-blown the full yeah. Villanova reunion yeah. will have to wait, man. Yeah. They'll just have to do dinner or meet up at Brunson's wedding or something, man. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just not going to happen with Macau Bridges. You know, with, with OG, because there's been this talk for a while now that he wants a larger role. He wants more of, of responsibility in the offense. My question is, as it relates to the asking price, we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. We, we have not seen him really dip into his bag where you're just like, okay, I can see the potential here. Yeah. Now, yeah, we can, we can part with a couple picks here. All right, maybe you want IQ, you want this. But his game is just not there yet. He can knock down a three. He could get you some corner threes. Shot at almost 40%. He could finish at the rim. Big body, good size, right? The, 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 the length, all, all of that. All of the intangibles that you want in a wing. And then on the defensive side, excellent. But does he have that bag in him? He's working on it. Yeah. But does he have that bag in him where you can definitively say this is his ceiling? He hasn't tapped into it yet, but he's going to get there. I just haven't seen that from him. Yeah, he's 25, 26, right? So, and that's my thing. And if if the there's a deal with if we're listening to half of these deals that are out there, if R.J. Barrett is one that's included in that, are you upgrading? That that's my big question. Are you actually upgrading when you're moving a, a piece like R.J. and that's going to also include picks and another piece? Are you actually upgrading if you're getting a guy like O.G. Ananobi? And that that's that's my big question mark with this, and why I'm having such a hard time with falling for this whole thing. I agree with you. You listen to it. You play it by ear. See what's going on with you, Jerry. But to Alex's point, who has, who has the Raptors and, and, and Masayo Jerry actually made any kind of business with recently? Nobody. And, and if, if that's not the case, then they lose these guys to free agency. You know what I mean? So I, I think this is one of those things that you, you try, you see what you can get, but you, you stand pat with what we've been doing so well for the last few years. And that's not jump the gun, especially on a guy like OG Ananobi, where you, if you're giving up a bunch of young talent for a guy that you're hoping is going to be great at 26 hey. years old. I can't do that. I, I, to me, I'm not a fan of it. I can't co-sign that. You got to worry about his injury history, too. That, right? too. Like, he played 67 games last season, but he played 48 the season before that. He played 43 the year before that. Oh, uh, he missed He missed playing in the championship round when the Raptors won that right. chip. Yeah. So injury concerns are a big thing with him, too. So if you're trading these many assets to go get a guy like That's OG no Ananobi, who's a solid role player at this point, like, I I guess, yeah. but like, it's not you're you're. That's so much of a risk, man. Yeah. Honestly, like with OG, like if if the Knicks are really gonna be serious about that, they really gotta like make sure that they're on the winning end of that trade. Yeah. But and for and for 
and for we're, we're talking about potential, like saying he wants to get more opportunities like that. We can right. say like, look at Mikhail Bridges over mm. in in Brooklyn right now. Yes, right? fair. We you know, like, we didn't, nobody they, really saw that. No one saw that one coming. No one and saw now, it. And now it's like, oh snap! Yeah. You know, imagine yeah. if you just allowed him to do th do that on Phoenix right. and give right. him more touches, right? So but who's maybe, really taking the touches from OG? That's the that, that's the question I keep having. He keeps mm. saying he wants more touches. Who's taking the touches from you? Pascal Siakam is not really that kind of guy that's give me the ball, I'm going to get you mm. these points. Pascal is uh, plays within the system really well. Mm -hmm. Fred Van Vliet, he, I mean, if you look up his injury history, he was pretty injury prone last year as well. So mm. he had opportunities. Mm. So I, I, I don't understand that whole I want, you know, a bigger role thing when you have many opportunities with that with Toronto and he hasn't really done much with it. So I, I don't know. I, 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 it's hard for me to compare the two between him and Mikhail Bridges. I yeah. see what you're saying. But Mikael Bridges, you know, you had you had Book, yeah. you got CP3, yeah. you got yeah. guys that are going to have the ball in their Aiden hands. Aiden was supposed to be that third dude, right? Yeah. So I, it, I, OG had opportunities. I, I no, those are all fair points, man. Those are all fair him. points. Yeah, and like, you could even say though, with all those guys, right? Mm -hmm. The only pushback I would say is that you got if 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 everyone's healthy on that team, mm -hmm. it's going to be Fred Van Vliet. It's going to be Siakam. And, you know, they got Scardy Barnes. They want to make sure he can be that dude as well. They're expecting him to be that number one option right now. So yeah. if you're OG, you could be like, well, when everyone's healthy, I don't really get that many touches. And when everyone's injured, like, how can you ask me to do everything, right? Even with Bridges out in Brooklyn, they won some games, but it wasn't like he's, wasn't he's not he? that dude yeah. where it's yeah. like he yeah. walks in, it's like, oh, snap. It's like a LeBron yeah. James moment where, okay, he dominates. It's going to be very tough for us, right? True. True, true indeed, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, let's get those likes up. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Knicks Fan TV live from Las Vegas at the NBA Summer League, man. Excellent weekend so far. We got a chance to see the MSG Sphere. You guys got it? Oh, get, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Dolan did yep. the damn thing with the he Sphere. He really did. Bro. Yeah, he did. He did. Excellent he did. infrastructure. And uh, we'll wait and see when uh, when Jay Z opens it up and the tickets will be like five thousand a game. I'll try, I'll try, <laughs> man. Hope if you're watching, just you know, hang out with me, we man. Have 40, don't worry, just Hove. hang out with me, man. I'll get you. Yo, yeah, you know what? There it is, there it is, there it is. Yeah. We will go holler at Mr. Vegas. We gonna and he'll see put in a call. There's gonna be Alex no cheese. Say no Hove. more, yeah. Say no more, man. Salute right. to J Cal in the chat. J Cal, salute, man. Jason Cal Canis in here. Our guy <laughs> Cedro Cross says nobody's taking uh, OG's touches. Uh, spot on, CK. So shout out our guy uh, Cedro Cross. Salute to King Matthews, another franchise, loyal franchise channel member of five months. He says, welcome back, CK. Some of these OB lovers think the Knicks are done because we traded OB and I thought the cam hive was bad. Dante equals good pickup, in my opinion. Now, you, you saw OB last night. I did. I, too, saw OB last night. Oh! Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. We, we didn't speak, actually, but... Oh, this um, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> from, 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 yeah, we didn't speak. But from his vantage point... I was on the blackjack table just getting absolutely annihilated. Damn. So, uh, you know, I was a dud on the blackjack table while, wow. while Obi Toppin was, uh, was probably watching and laughing. So, yeah, I did, I did see Obi at, uh, at the Cosmo last night. A lot of players came through there. But look, man, it, it, it is tough to see him in, in a Pacers jersey. Ugh. He's out there. He's, you know, elbowing with, with Miles Turner. He's, he's, he's rolling with Halliburton now. They clicked up. They clicked up heavy. They brought him into the fold quite nicely. But... The, 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 I made a comment on, on OB last week after the trade, and it garnered a lot of controversy. A lot of Knicks fans were kind of tight at what I said. But the, the comment I made was that the OB pick was a dud pick, and it's, it's – the, the issue with the Knicks, man, is that since 1985, they have not found a draft pick – to really take this team over the top. And, and, and that's what I said on Twitter. And people are like, oh, you're hating on RJ, you're hating on IQ. Right? All those guys, are, they're, they're good guys. They have talent. Oh, We've seen comment. promise. I know right? this comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those, what their ceilings are is yet to be determined. Because we need all-stars here. We need all-stars. What these guys in Denver just did. You had one guy playing at a superstar level, MVP, otherworldly, generational. And you had Jamal Murray playing at an all-star level. That is what you need. To build your team around. That is a challenge that the Knicks have is that every draft, they can never seem to find that guy that can take them over the top. Brunson's a great player, but now we're trying to figure out from a trade perspective, how do you bring in a true, true, no offense to Julius, but a true no, second or even third guy. Yeah. We're, trying, we're talking about championship. We're not yeah. talking about getting to the second round and having fun and being outside 7th Avenue. We're talking about championship and how hard it is. Like, look at 
how hard it was to get past Miami mm -hmm. and look at how far apart Miami and Denver were. Yep. That's how elite you need to be as a basketball team to be raising that Larry O'Brien trophy yeah. in, in June. I'm not talking about the end season championship. We, we, we don't care about that. Yeah. Right? I'm talking about the Larry O'Brien. It's tough. And now you, you're at Summer League, you're looking at all these kids running up and down, killing it. Jarris Walker, killing it. Uh, 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 Kevontae George, Wemby, Scoot Henderson. Thompson. You know, it's yeah. interesting how Jarris Walker was the first name you listed off, CP. That's how it starts. It starts in the yeah. draft, man. And so, you know, the Knicks are looking at a, another year with no pick. And the Dallas situation, I still can't believe Dallas was able to get off scot-free Yes, that's still bothers intentionally me. Intentionally tanking. Yes. Look at all these guys the Knicks could potentially have had on this rotation, on this roster. Their own superstar was mad about it. Luca didn't like it. Un <laughs> he, unbelievable. He openly said he didn't like it, and it happened. So, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, again, it's just going to be interesting to see. But I think Leon mm -hmm. and those guys have done a good job in being patient. I like the DiVincenzo pickup. It was what they needed. It was what they, what they needed with the money that they had based on the talent that was available. And, and that we'll see how they navigate that. We did see Tibbs at Summer League, man. Tibbs was in a good mood. Yeah, he smiling, was smiling, man. He was smiling. Yeah. yeah. You want to know why he was smiling? Yeah. Because he didn't have <laughs> No <laughs> rookies. <laughs> he said, none of you guys like, none none of are coming close to Tarrytown. Hey, give some love to my boy, Daquan Jeffries, though, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, give yeah, some yeah. love to hey, Daquan, Daquan Jeffries. Hooper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he played well for us on this summer league team last year as well. Yeah. Played well this year. You know, I'm really happy with him. But unfortunately, he fits the same role that we have for the rest of our team, which is an undersized guard. So I don't know what minutes he's going to get. But, yeah. yeah, he held it down for sure. He's the guy, CK. Yep. That's my guy, man. <laughs> Daquan. Yeah.